Hello, and welcome to the Resource Library Presentations, produced by the NCC's Comprehensive Digitization and Discoverability Program. In this video series, generously funded by the Toshiba International Foundation, the NCC's CDDP Task Force highlights projects that are making digital images accessible in new ways. Each presentation discusses the project's content and purpose, how to use the site, and which tools were used to build it. We hope that these videos inspire and support those using images in their work or who plan to digitize their own collections. Hello, I'm Kathy Astor, the Service Manager for Spotlight at Stanford. In this video, I'll introduce you to Spotlight, which is a solution enabling librarians, curators, and others to create attractive, feature-rich websites that highlight digital collections. Spotlight is a plugin to Blacklight, a popular open source solution for building library discovery environments. It is important to point out that Spotlight is repository agnostic. It doesn't matter what digital asset management or repository system you use at your institution, Spotlight is designed to be configurable in this regard. Spotlight also supports the upload of IIIF resources, as I'll demo later in this video. Spotlight allows librarians, faculty, and curators the ability to showcase digital collections and contextualize the content with storytelling features. In 2012 to 13, we developed three digital collection websites. It took us a full year to do this work. We quickly realized that building custom standalone digital collection websites was not going to be a sustainable resource balanced approach to address the growing queue of digitized content in need of enhanced discovery. Library blog posts, curator authored collection highlight pages on our library website and library catalog records were insufficient means by themselves to showcase our vast array of digitized resources for research and teaching needs. So in 2013 to 14, Stanford Libraries undertook a design and development process for Spotlight. We interviewed staff to assess their needs and also engaged with the Blacklight open source community at conferences to obtain their feedback. In June 2014, the first exhibit was published, thereby launching the first production instance of Spotlight. As you see in the graph on the left, Spotlight occupies a sweet spot for both depth and complexity of exposure for digital content, alongside the time and resources required to maintain a Spotlight instance and support exhibit creators. Spotlight provides a sustainable, repurposable, and configurable solution to feature and showcase selected collections. We also needed a solution that provided the ability for curators and content experts to build their own websites without the need for engineering support for each online exhibit. As Spotlight adoption has grown at Stanford and other academic institutions, Exhibit creators have taught us about the adaptability of Spotlight. I'll mention a few examples, but the possibilities continue to surprise us. By the way, I will use the terms curator and creator interchangeably throughout this presentation to mean a colleague with subject matter expertise who is also engaged in selecting digital content for an exhibit, as well as storyboarding, writing narrative text, and building an exhibit. The need to showcase a specific digital collection is a use case we designed for, as in the travel through time Japan example depicted here. This allows exhibit creators to build a narrative by grouping content in meaningful ways and providing supplementary text that explains their place in a larger scholarly environment. Scholarly essays can be included as well. Curators who are teaching classes are using exhibits as an instructional aid, often assigning students a specific work to research, such as rare or archival material from Stanford Special Collections. 
Students can each be responsible for authoring a feature page in an exhibit to share their scholarly research with others and satisfy course requirements. Allowing the students to interact with the content and create new ways of presenting it to general audiences is becoming a key tool for humanities pedagogy. As I will demo later in this presentation, Spotlight can be an excellent choice for a physical exhibit or conference companion. For an exhibit companion, pages within a digital exhibit can be used to reflect the major sections and individual cases of the physical exhibit. Images show the exhibit objects that were on display, while explanatory text reflects descriptions that accompanied those objects while they were on exhibit for people to view. An advantage of creating a digital exhibit companion is that this visual and textual record of the physical exhibit will persist long after the physical items are removed from the exhibit space. To meet the sustainable goals we identified for the Spotlight solution, the ability for curators to create their own exhibits without support from a software developer was key. We needed a full set of configurable features to allow curators to have a robust exhibit building tool set. For our instance of Spotlight, we also connected it to our preservation repository. Each website, we call them exhibits, includes a home page, a set of browse categories, one or more feature pages that can be used to provide context and tell stories about the collection or items in the exhibit, whether images or audio or video. And finally, a set of about pages that include contacts, perhaps credit to funders and or partners, bibliographic resources and other related information. Here you see the homepage for the Tokyo Over Time exhibit, which I will be demoing shortly. We're behind the scenes now on the Exhibit Creator dashboard. The form-based exhibit creation process is easy to use and allows for customization of site identity, user role management, and robust metadata display. Here, you see an example of the general configuration page used by an exhibit creator, where they select an image for the exhibit masthead and main exhibit thumbnail, as well as order and rename the main menu items as desired. This is a high level list of considerations for anyone gathering content for a spotlight exhibit. I'd simply like to highlight two items that are easy to overlook if this is a new type of scholarly activity you are undertaking. Researching copyright and access restrictions is key as nothing will set an effort back faster than discovering digital content has copyright limitations affecting visibility and sharing. In a completely different vein, if you are identifying research materials that will require digitization, Consultation with the Conservator First will prepare you for image capture handling recommendations, as well as any repair that might be required prior to digitization. Creating a spotlight exhibit can be a lot of fun and a positive experience when you are prepared. Make sure you read through local and or community documentation so you have a good idea about the tools and affordances provided mock up or storyboard your exhibit in advance. Start writing the narrative text that will accompany your digital content, and then you will be ready to build your exhibit. It's helpful to partner with another person when you can to share ideas and copy editing of narrative content. This is the Tokyo Over Time exhibit. It was created by two Stanford colleagues to use as part of their presentation at the International Cartography Conference in Tokyo in July 2019. This exhibit makes use of all main menu items beyond the homepage, feature pages, browse categories, and an about page. The homepage orients the viewer to the purpose of the exhibit with curator authored text and highlight selected images from the exhibit. Robust search capability for the descriptive metadata associated with exhibit items is provided with fielded search 
or simple search as you see enabled here. Curators can create one or more feature pages. This page displays two historic maps which have been geo-referenced. These images are from the Stanford Digital Repository, as are all images in this exhibit. Browse categories have been used to arrange exhibit images by topic. Here you can view images in a list or other views, and you can select each image to view all descriptive metadata and zoom in on the image using Stanford's Mirador 3 enabled viewer. Finally, the About page contains contact and other information about the exhibit. This is the Travel Through Time Japan exhibit. It was created by the Stanford Curator for Japanese Collections to showcase a sampling of travel-related ephemera collected by our East Asia Library. This exhibit makes use of browse categories. Here, I will select the category Shrine Precincts and click on the first image. Below the descriptive metadata, a map is displayed with the location for this shrine indicated by a bounding box. This map view feature is enabled because the item description includes geospatial metadata encoded to meet spotlight specifications for display. On the about page, numerous staff are thanked for their contributions that ultimately brought the exhibit to fruition. Some of the staff listed are from the Conservation Services Department at Stanford Libraries. This feature page from a different, soon to be published exhibit about conservation at Stanford Libraries highlights the repairs performed on several prints used in the Travel Through Time exhibit prior to their digitization. We encourage all exhibit creators to acknowledge the many hands, often hidden labor, that goes into making each exhibit possible. For the final demo in this presentation, I will show how easy it is to add a IIIF item to an exhibit. IIIF, or the International Image Interoperability Framework, is a set of open standards that allows libraries, archives, and museums to share their digital collections with multiple institutions for the benefit of scholars around the world. You simply need the IIIF manifest URL, a unique URL assigned to digitized items by the institution hosting that material. Here on the exhibit dashboard, which is used by exhibit creators to build an exhibit, you can navigate to the add items section and on the IIIF tab, you can add the IIIF manifest URL. Click Add IIIF Items, and in several seconds, the image will be available in your exhibit, as you see here. We currently have 120 published exhibits. Our success is due to the fruitful collaboration between our exhibit creators service team and software developers. Please check out our grant supported partnerships with the Digital Library of the Middle East and the Vatican Library. This is a list of all spotlight adopters we know of in the United States and Canada. A link to each spotlight instance is provided. Please check them out to see the great work of our colleagues. Libraries collect materials in many languages, as well as content relevant to many different cultures. Providing context around these materials in multiple languages helps to improve access to those diverse audiences for whom these materials may be particularly relevant. Spotlight provides capabilities for creating a single exhibit in multiple different languages. Translations of common user interface elements are provided for a core set of languages and additional translated material can be provided by the curator. Metadata for repository objects is displayed in the language in which it was cataloged. 
we do not currently have translations of common user interface elements for Japanese. Please consider helping with translations so we can add Japanese to the list of supported languages. I'm happy to share this list of Spotlight resources that are Stanford specific, but will be helpful if your institution is considering Spotlight adoption. Finally, here is a list of Spotlight community resources for your reference. In order to use Spotlight, your institution must host a Spotlight instance. If your institution was listed on the Spotlight adopter slide, please reach out to your library staff to inquire about using Spotlight to build an exhibit. However, if your institution was not listed as an adopter, we recommend reaching out to your library IT staff to inquire if they would consider hosting and maintaining a Spotlight instance. You can direct them to the links provided in this presentation for more information about Spotlight and how to connect with the Spotlight community. Thank you. Thank you for watching the presentation. We hope you found it useful. Please check other videos in the CDDP presentation library.